This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Kara Schallenberg. Ulysses by James Joyce. Chapter 11a. Bronze by gold heard the hoof irons, steely ringing imperthinanan. Chips, picking chips off rocky thumbnail, chips. Horrid, and gold flushed more. A husky fife note blew. Blue, blue bloom is on the gold pinnacled hair. A jumping rose on satiny breast of satin, rose of Castile. Trilling, trilling, I Dolores. Peep, who's in the peep of gold? Tink cried to bronze in pity. And a call, pure, long and throbbing, long and dying call. Decoy, soft word, but look, the bright stars fade. Notes chirruping answer. O oh, rose, Castile, the morn is breaking. Jingle, jingle, jaunted, jingling. Coin rang, clock clacked. A vowel, sonnet. I could. Rebound of garter. Not leave thee. Smack. La cloche. Thigh smack. A vowel. Warm. Sweetheart, good-bye. Jingle. Blue. Boomed crashing chords. When love absorbs. War, war, the tympanum. A sail. A veil, a wave upon the waves. Lost. Throstle fluted, all is lost now. Horn, hawthorn. When first he saw, alas, full tup, full trob, full throb, warbling, ah, lure, alluring. Martha, come, clap, clap, clip, clap, clappy clap. Good God, Henever heard in all. Deaf bald pat brought pad knife took up. A moonlit night call. Far, far. I feel so sad. P.S. So lonely blooming. Listen. The spiked and winding cold sea horn. Have you the? Each and for other. Plash and silent roar. Pearls. When she. Lists rhapsodies. Hiss. You don't? Did not, no, no, believe, liddy lid, with a cock and a, with a cock with a cara, black, deep sounding, do, ben, do. Wait while you wait, he he, wait while you he, but wait. Low in dark middle earth, embedded o'er. Now mind a mine, preacher is he. All gone, all fallen. Tiny, her tremulous fern-foils of maidenhair. Armin, he gnashed in fury. Fro, to, fro, a baton cool protruding. Bronze Lydia by Minigold. By bronze, by gold, in ocean green of shadow. Bloom, old bloom. One rapped, one tapped, with a cara, with a cock. Pray for him, pray, good people. His gouty fingers knackering. Big Beneben, Big Benben. Last rose, Castile of summer left bloom, I feel so sad alone. Pwee! Little wind piped, wee! True men, lid care cow dee and doll. Ay, ay, like you men, will lift your chink with chunk. Pff! Ooh! Where bronze from a near? Where gold from afar? Where hoofs? Rup, cra, crandel. Then, not till then, my epriptaf, be frit. Done. Begin. Bronze by gold, Miss Deuce's head by Miss Kennedy's head, over the cross blind of the Ormond bar, heard the vice regal hoofs go by, ringing steel. Is that her? asked Miss Kennedy. Miss Deuce said yes, sitting with his ex, pearl-grey and eau de nil. 
"'Exquisite contrast,' Miss Kennedy said. When all agog, Miss Douce said eagerly, "'Look at the fellow in the tall silk!' "'Who? Where?' Gold asked more eagerly. "'In the second carriage,' Miss Douce's wet lips said, laughing in the sun. "'He's looking. Mind till I see.' She darted bronze to the backmost corner, flattening her face against the pane in a halo of hurried breath. Her wet lips tittered. "'He's killed looking back!' She laughed. "'Oh, wept! Aren't men frightful idiots!' with sadness. Miss Kennedy sauntered sadly from bright light, twining a loose hair behind an ear. Sauntering sadly, gold no more, she twisted, twined a hair. Sadly she twined in sauntering gold hair behind a curving ear. "'It's them has the fine times,' sadly then she said. A man. Blue who went by by Mulang's pipes, bearing in his breast the sweets of sin, by wines antiques, in memory bearing sweet sinful words, by Carol's dusky battered plate, for Raoul. The boots to them, them in the bar, them barmaids came. For them unheeding him he banged on the counter his tray of chattering china, and— "'There's your teas,' he said. Miss Kennedy with manners transposed the tea-tray down to an upturned lithia crate, safe from eyes, low. "'What is it?' loud boots unmannerly asked. "'Find out,' Miss Deuce reported, retorted, leaving her spying-point. "'Your bow, is it?' A haughty bronze replied. "'I'll complain to Mrs. de Massey on you if I hear any more of your impertinent insolence.' Impertinent thin 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 boots snout sniffed rudely, as he retreated as she threatened as he had come. Bloom. On her flower frowning, Miss Deuce said, "'Most aggravating that young brat is. If he doesn't conduct himself, I'll wring his ear for him a yard long.' Ladylike, in exquisite contrast. "'Take no notice,' Miss Kennedy rejoined. She poured in a teacup tea, then back in the teapot tea. They cowered under their reef of counter, waiting on footstools, crates upturned, waiting for their teas to draw. They pawed their blouses, both of black satin, two and nine a yard, waiting for their teas to draw, and two and seven. Yes, bronze from an ear, buy gold from afar, heard steel from an ear, hoofs ring from afar, and heard steel hoofs ring hoof ring steel. "'Am I awfully sunburnt?' Miss Bronze unbloused her neck. "'No,' said Miss Kennedy. "'It gets brown after. Did you try the borax with the cherry laurel water?' Miss Deuce half stood to see her skin askance in the bar mirror, gilded lettered where hock and claret glasses shimmered, and in their midst a shell. "'And leave it to my hands,' she said. "'Try it with the glycerin,' Miss Kennedy advised. Bidding her neck and hands adieu, Miss Deuce. Those things only bring out a rash, replied, reseated. I asked that old fogey in Boyd's for something for my skin. Miss Kennedy, pouring now a full-drawn tea, grimaced and prayed, Oh, don't remind me of him, for mercy's sake. But wait till I tell you, Miss Deuce entreated. Sweet tea, Miss Kennedy, having poured with milk, plugged both two ears with little fingers. "'No, don't!' she cried. "'I won't listen!' she cried. "'But Bloom?' "'Miss Deuce grunted in snuffy Fogey's tone. "'For your what?' says he. "'Miss Kennedy unplugged her ears to hear, to speak, but said, but prayed again. "'Don't let me think of him, or I'll expire, the hideous old wretch, "'that night in the antient concert-rooms.' She sipped distastefully her brew, hot tea, a sip, sipped sweet tea. "'Here he was,' Miss Deuce said, cocking her bronze head three-quarters, ruffling her nose-wings. "'Huffa, huffa!' Shrill shriek of laughter sprang from Miss Kennedy's throat. Miss Deuce huffed and snorted down her nostrils that quivered imperthen like a snout in quest. "'Oh!' shrieking, Miss Kennedy cried. "'Will you ever forget his goggle eye?' Miss Deuce chimed in, in deep bronze laughter, shouting, 
and your other eye. Blow whose dark eye read Aaron Figatner's name. Why do I always think Figather? Gathering figs, I think, and Prosper Lore's Huguenot name. By bassy blessed virgins Bloom's dark eyes went by. Blue robed, white under, come to me. God they believe she is, or goddess. Those to-day, I could not see. That fellow spoke, a student, after with Daedalus's son. He might be Mulligan. All comely virgins. That brings those rakes of fellows in, her white. By went his eyes, the sweets of sin, sweet are the sweets of sin. In a giggling peal young gold bronze voices blended, deuce with Kennedy your other eye. They threw young heads back, bronze giggle gold, to let free fly their laughter, screaming, your other, signals to each other, high piercing notes. Ah, panting, sighing, sighing, ah, fordone, their mirth died down. Miss Kennedy lipped her cup again, raised, drank a sip, and giggle-giggled. Miss Deuce, bending over the tea-tray, ruffled again her nose, and rolled droll, fattened eyes. Again Kenny giggles, stooping, her fair pinnacles of hair, stooping, her tortoise nape-comb showed, spluttered out of her mouth her tea, choking in tea and laughter, coughing with choking, crying, "'Oh, greasy eyes! Imagine being married to a man like that!' she cried. "'With his bit of beard!' Deuce gave full vent to a splendid yell, a full yell of full woman, delight, joy, indignation. "'Married to the greasy nose!' she yelled. Shrill with deep laughter, after gold after bronze, they urged each other to peal after peal, ringing in changes, bronze gold, gold bronze, shrill deep, to laughter after laughter. And then laughed more. Greasy I knows, exhausted, breathless, their shaken heads they laid, braided and pinnacled by glossy combed, against the counter-ledge, all flushed, oh, panting, sweating, oh, all breathless. Married to bloom, to grease a bloom. Oh, saints above, Miss Deuce said, sighed above her jumping rose. I wished I hadn't laughed so much. I feel all wet. Oh, Miss Deuce, Miss Kennedy protested, you horrid thing. And flushed yet more, you horrid, more goldenly. By Cantwell's offices roved Grisa Bloom, by Seppi's virgins, bright of their oils. Nanetti's father hawked those things about, wheedling at doors as I. Religion pays. Must see him for that par. Eat first. I want. Not yet. At four, she said. Time ever passing. Clock hands turning. On. Where eat? The Clarence. Dolphin. Dolphin. On, for Raoul, eat, if I net five guineas with those ads, the violet silk petticoats, not yet, the sweets of sin. Flushed less, still less, goldenly paled. Into their bar strolled Mr. Dedalus, chips, picking chips off one of his rocky thumbnails, chips, he strolled. Oh, welcome back, Miss Deuce. He held her hand. Enjoyed her holidays? Tip-top. He hoped she had nice weather in Rustrevor. Gorgeous, she said. Look at the holy show I am, lying out on the strand all day. Bronze whiteness. That was exceedingly naughty of you, Mr. Dedalus told her, and pressed her hand indulgently. Tempting poor simple males. Miss Deuce of Satin deuced her arm away. Oh, go away, she said. You're very simple, I don't think. He was. Well, now I am, he mused. I looked so simple in the cradle they christened me Simple Simon. You must have been doughty, Miss Deuce made answer. And what did the doctor order today? Well, now, he mused, whatever you say yourself, I think I'll trouble you for some fresh water and a half glass of whiskey. Jingle. With the greatest alacrity Miss Deuce agreed. With grace of alacrity towards the mirror-gilt Cantrell and Cochrane's she turned herself. 
With grace she tapped a measure of gold whisky from her crystal keg. Forth from the skirt of his coat Mr. Dedalus brought pouch and pipe. Alacrity she served. He blew through the flue two husky fife notes. "'By Jove,' he mused, "'I often wanted to see the Morn Mountains. Must be a great tonic in the air down there. But a long threatening comes at last, they say. Yes, yes. Yes.' He fingered shreds of hair, her maiden hair, her mermaids, into the bowl. Chips, shreds, musing, mute. None naught said nothing, yes. Gaily Miss Deuce polished a tumbler, trilling, O oh, I, Dolores, queen of the eastern seas! Was Mr. Lidwell in to-day? In came Lenehan. Round him peered Lenehan. Mr. Bloom reached Essex Bridge. Yes, Mr. Bloom crossed Bridge of Essex. To Martha I must write. By paper. Dallies. Girl, they're civil. Bloom. Old Bloom. Blue Bloom is on the rye. He was in at lunchtime, Miss Deuce said. Lenehan came forward. Was Mr. Boylan looking for me? he asked. She answered. Miss Kennedy, was Mr. Boylan in while I was upstairs? she asked. Miss Voice of Kennedy answered, a second teacup poised, her gaze upon a page. No, he was not. Miss Gaze of Kennedy, heard, not seen, read on. Lenehan, round the sandwich bell, wound his round body round. Peep, who's in the corner? No glance of Kennedy rewarding him yet, he made overtures, to mind her stops, to read only the black ones, round O and crooked S. Jingle, jaunty jingle. Girl gold, she read, and did not glance, take no notice. She took no notice while he read by rote a sulfa fable for her, plappering flatly. Ah, fox met a ah, stork, said the fox to the stork, will you put your bill down in my throat and pull up a bone? He droned in vain. Miss Deuce turned to her tea aside. He sighed aside. Ah, me, oh, my. He greeted Mr. Dedalus and got a nod. Greetings from the famous son of a famous father. Who may he be? Mr. Dedalus asked. Lenehan opened most genial arms. Who? Who may he be? he asked. Can you ask? Stephen, the youthful bard. Dry. Mr. Dedalus, famous father, laid by his dry-filled pipe. I see, he said. I didn't recognize him for the moment. I hear he is keeping very select company. Have you seen him lately? He had. I quaffed the nectar bowl with him this very day, said Lenehan. In Mooney's en ville, and in Mooney's sur mer. He had received the rhino for the labor of his muse. He smiled at bronze's tea bathed lips, at listening lips and eyes. The elite of Erin hung upon his lips, the ponderous pundit, Hugh McHugh, Dublin's most brilliant scribe and editor, and that minstrel boy of the wild wet west, who is known by the euphonious appellation of the O'Madden Burke. After an interval Mr. Dedalus raised his grog, and— "'That must have been highly diverting,' said he. "'I see.' He see. He drank. With faraway morning mountain eye, set down his glass. He looked towards the saloon door. "'I see you moved the piano.' "'The tuner was in to-day,' Miss Deuce replied, "'tuning it for the smoking concert, and I never heard such an exquisite player.' Is that a fact? Didn't he, Miss Kennedy, the real classical, you know, and blind, too, poor fellow? Not twenty, I'm sure he was. Is that a fact? Mr. Dedalus said. He drank and strayed away. So sad to look at his face, Miss Deuce condoled. God's curse on bitches bastard. Tink to her pity cried a dinner's bell. A diner's bell. To the door of the bar and dining-room came bald Pat, came bothered Pat, came Pat, waiter of Ormond, lager for dinner, lager without alacrity she served. With patience Lenehan waited for Boylan with impatience, for jingle-jaunty Blaze's boy. Upholding the lid he, who, 
gazed in the coffin, coffin? At the oblique triple, piano, wires. He pressed, the same who pressed indulgently her hand, soft pedalling, a triple of keys to see the thicknesses of felt advancing, to hear the muffled hammer fall in action. Two sheets cream vellum paper, one reserve, two envelopes, when I was in wisdom Helly's wise bloom in dailies Henry Flower bought. Are you not happy in your home? Flower to console me, and a pin cuts low, means something, language of flow. Was it a daisy? Innocence, that is. Respectable girl, meet after mass. Thanks awfully muchly. Wise Bloom eyed on the door a poster, a swaying mermaid smoking mid-nice waves. Smoke mermaids, coolest whiff of all. Hair streaming, lovelorn, for some man, for Raoul. He eyed and saw afar on Essex Bridge a gay hat riding on a jaunting car. It is, again, third time coincidence. Jingling on supple rubbers it jaunted from the bridge to Ormond Quay. Follow, risk it, go quick, at four, near now, out. Tuppence, sir, the shop-girl dared to say. Ah, I was forgetting, excuse. And four. At four she, winslemly she, on blue him whom smiled. Blue smy qui go, turnoon. Think you're the only pebble on the beach? Does that to all. For men. In drowsy silence gold bent on her page. From the saloon a call came, long and dying. That was a tuning fork the tuner had that he forgot that he now struck. A call again. That he now poised, that it now throbbed, you hear? It throbbed, pure, purer, Softly and softlier its buzzing prongs. Longer in dying call. Pat paid for diner's pop-corked bottle, and over tumbler tray and pop-corked bottle, ere he went he whispered, bald and bothered, without. With Miss Deuce. The bright stars fade. A voiceless song sang from within, singing. The morn is breaking. A duodene of bird notes chirruped bright treble answer under sensitive hands. Brightly the keys, all twinkling, linked, all harps according, called to a voice to sing the strain of dewy morn, of youth, of love's leave-taking, life's love's morn. The dewdrop's pearl. Lenehan's lips over the counter lisped a low whistle of decoy. But look this way, he said, rose of Castile. Jingle jaunted by the curb and stopped. She rose and closed her reading, Rose of Castile, fretted, forlorn, dreamily rose. Did she fall, or was she pushed? he asked her. She answered, slighting. Ask no questions, and you'll hear no lies. Like lady, ladylike. Blazes Boylan's smart tan shoes creaked on the bar floor where he strode. Yes, gold from anear, by bronze from afar. Lenehan heard, and knew, and hailed him. See, the conquering hero comes. Between the car and window, warily walking, went Bloom, unconquered hero. See me he might, the seat he sat on, warm. Black wary he-cat walked towards Richie Golding's legal bag, lifted aloft, saluting. And I from thee. I heard you were round, said Blazes Boylan. He touched to fair Miss Kennedy a rim of his slanted straw. She smiled on him, but Sister Bronze outsmiled her, preening for him her richer hair, a bosom and a rose. Smart Boylan bespoke potions. What's your cry, glass of bitter? Glass of bitter, please, and a slow gin for me. Wire in yet? Not yet. At four she. Who said four? Cowley's red lugs and bulging apple in the door of the sheriff's office. Avoid. Gooling a chance. What is he doing in the Ormond? Car waiting. Wait. Hello. Where off to? Something to eat? I too was just. In here. What, Ormond? Best value in Dublin. Is that so? Dining room. Sit tight there. See, not be seen. I think I'll join you. Come on. Richie led on. Bloom followed bag. Dinner fit for a prince. 
Miss Douce reached high to take a flagon, stretching her satin arm, her bust, that all but burst so high. "'Oh, oh!' jerked Lenehan, gasping at each stretch. "'Oh!' But easily she seized her prey and led it low in triumph. "'Why don't you grow?' asked Blazes Boylan. She bronze, dealing from her oblique jar thick syrupy liquor for his lips, looked as it flowed. Flower in his coat, who gave him? And syrupped with her voice. Fine goods in small parcels. That is to say, she. Neatly she poured slow syrupy slow. Here's fortune, Blazes said. He pitched a broad coin down. Coin rang. Hold on, said Lenehan, till I— Fortune, he wished, lifting his bubbled ale. Scepter will win in a canter, he said. I plunged a bit, said Boylan, winking and drinking. Not on my own, you know. Fancy of a friend of mine. Lenehan still drank and grinned at his tilted ale and at Miss Deuce's lips that all but hummed, not shut, the ocean song her lips had trilled. Idolores, the eastern seas. Clock whirred. Miss Kennedy passed their way. Flower, wonder who gave. Bearing away tea-tray. Clock clacked. Miss Deuce took Boylan's coin, struck boldly the cash register. It clanged. Clock clacked. Fair one of Egypt teased and sorted in the till and hummed and handed coins in change. Look to the west. A clack for me. What time is that? asked Blazes Boylan. Four? O'clock. Lenehan, small eyes, a hunger on her humming, bust a humming, tugged Blazes Boylan's elbow sleeve. Let's hear the time, he said. The bag of Goulding, Collis, Ward, led bloom by rye bloom, flowered tables. Aimless he chose with agitated aim, bald pat attending, a table near the door, be near, at four. Has he forgotten? Perhaps a trick. Not come. What appetite. I couldn't do. Wait, wait. Pat, waiter, waited. Sparkling bronze azure eyed Blazier's sky-blue bow and eyes. Go on, pressed Lanahan. There's no one. He never heard. To Flora's lips did high. High, a high note pealed in the treble clear. Bronze Dutes communing with her rose that sank and rose sought, Blazes Boylan's flower and eyes. Please, please, he pleaded over returning phrases of avowal. I could not leave thee. Afterwards, Miss Deuce promised coyly. No, now, urged Lenehan. Sonnez la cloche. Oh, do, there's no one. She looked. Quick. Miss Ken out of earshot, sudden bent, two kindling faces watched her bend. Quavering the cords, strayed from the air, found it again, lost cord, and lost and found it, faltering. Go on, do, sonnet. Bending, she nipped a peak of skirt above her knee. Delayed, taunted them still, bending, suspending, with willful eyes. Sonnet. Smack. She set free sudden in rebound her nipped elastic garter smack warm against her smackable a woman's warm th hosed thigh. La cloche! cried gleeful Lenehan. Trained by owner, no sawdust there. She smile smirked supercilious. Wept, aren't men? But lightward gliding, mild, she smiled on Boylan. You are the essence of vulgarity, she in gliding said. Boylan eyed, eyed, tossed to fat lips his chalice, drank off his chalice tiny, sucking the last fat violet syrupy drops. His spellbound eyes went after, after her gliding head as it went down the bar by mirrors, gilded arch for ginger ale, hock and claret glasses shimmering, a spiky shell where it concerted mirrored, bronze with sunnier bronze. Yes, bronze from a nearby. Sweetheart, good-bye. I'm off, said Boylan with impatience. He slid his chalice brisk away, grasped his change. Wait a shake, begged Lanahan, drinking quickly. I wanted to tell you. Tom Roachford. 
"'Come on to Blazes,' said Blazes Boylan, going. Lenahan gulped to go. "'Got the horn or what?' he said. "'Wait, I'm coming.' He followed the hasty creaking shoes, but stood by nimbly on the threshold, saluting forms, a bulky with a slender. "'How do you do, Mr. Dollard?' "'Eh, how do, how do?' Ben Dollard's vague bat— Ben Dollard's vague bass answered, turning an instant from Father Cowley's woe. "'He won't give you any trouble, Bob. Alf Bergen will speak to the long fellow. We'll put a barley straw in that Judas Iscariot's ear this time.' Sighing, Mr. Dedalus came through the saloon, a finger soothing an eyelid. "'Ho, ho, we will, Ben Dollard yodel jollily. Come on, Simon, give us a ditty. We heard the piano.' Bald Pat, bothered waiter, waited for drink orders. Power for Richie. And Bloom? Let me see. Not make him walk twice. His corns. Four now. How warm this black is. Coarse nerves a bit. Refracts. Is it? Heat. Let me see. Cider. Yes, bottle of cider. What's that? Mr. Dedalus said. I was only vamping, man. Come on, come on, Ben Dollard called. Be gone, dull care. Come, Bob. He ambled dollard bulky slops before them hold that fellow with the hold him now into the saloon he plumped him dollard on the stool his gouty paws plumped cords plumped stopped abrupt bald pat in the doorway met tealess gold returning bothered he wanted power and cider bronze by the window watched bronze from afar jingle a tinkle jaunted Bloom heard a jing, a little sound. He's off, light sob of breath. Bloom sighed on the silent blue-hued flowers. Jingling, he's gone. Jingle, here. Love and war, Ben, Mr. Dedalus said. God be with old times. Miss Deuce's brave eyes, unregarded, turned from the cross-blind, smitten by sunlight. Gone. Pensive, who knows, smitten, the smiting light. She lowered the drop-blind with a sliding cord. She drew down pensive. Why did he go so quick when I— About her bronze, over the bar where bald stood by Sister Gold, in exquisite contrast, contrast in exquisite non-exquisite, slow, cool, dim, sea-green, sliding depth of shadow, eau de nil. Poor old Goodwin was the pianist that night, Father Cowley reminded them. There was a slight difference of opinion between himself and the collared grand. There was. A symposium all his own, Mr. Dedalus said. The devil wouldn't stop him. He was a crotchety old fellow in the primary stage of drink. God, do you remember? Ben Bulky Dollard said, turning from the punished keyboard. And by japers I had no wedding garment. They laughed, all three. He had no wed. All trio laughed. No wedding garment. Our friend Bloom turned in handy that night, Mr. Dedalus said. Where's my pipe, by the way? He wandered back to the bar, to the lost cord pipe. Bald Pat carried the two diner's drinks, Richie and Poldy, and Father Cowley laughed again. I saved the situation, Ben, I think. You did, averred Ben Dollard. I remember those tight trousers, too. That was a brilliant idea, Bob. Father Cowley blushed to his brilliant purply lobes. He saved the situé. Tight trow. Brilliant I.D. "'I know he was on the rocks,' he said. "'The wife was playing the piano in the coffee palace on Saturdays, for a very trifling consideration. And who was it gave me the wheeze she was doing the other business? Do you remember? We had to search all Hollis Street to find them till the chap in Keogh's gave us the number. Remember?' Ben remembered his broad visage wondering. By God, she had some luxurious opera cloaks and things there. Mr. Dedalus wandered back, pipe in hand. Marion Square style, ball dresses, by God, and court dresses. He wouldn't take any money either, what? Any God's quantity of cocked hats and boleros and trunk hose, what? Aye, aye, Mr. Dedalus nodded. Mrs. Marion Bloom has left off clothes of all descriptions. Jingle jaunted down the quays. Blazes sprawled on bounding tires. Liver and bacon, steak and kidney pie. Right, sir. Right, Pat. Mrs. Marion met him pike hoses, smell of burn, of Paul de Cock. 
Nice name, he. What's this her name was? A buxom lassie, Marion... Tweedy. Yes, is she alive? And kicking. She was a daughter of... Daughter of the regiment. Yes, begad, I remember the old drum major. Mr. Dedalus struck, whizzed, lit, puffed, savoury puff after. Irish? I don't know, faith. Is she, Simon? Puff after stiff, a puff, strong, savoury, crackling. Buccinator muscle is... what? Bit rusty. Oh, she is... My Irish Molly, oh! He puffed a pungent plumy blast. From the rock of Gibraltar all the way. They pined in depth of ocean shadow, gold by the beer pole, bronze by maraschino, thoughtful all too. Mina Kennedy, four Lismore Terrace, drum condra with I Dolores, a queen Dolores, silent. Pat served uncovered dishes. Leopold cut liver slices. As said before, he ate with relish the inner organs, nutty gizzards, fried cod's rose, while Richie Golding, Collis, Ward, ate steak and kidney, steak, then kidney, bite by bite of pie he ate, Bloom ate, they ate. Bloom with Golding, married in silence, ate, dinners fit for princes. By bachelor's walk jog jaunty jingled blazes boilin bachelor, in sun, in heat, mare's glossy rump a trot, with flick of whip on bounding tires, sprawled, warm seated, boilin impatience, ardent bold. Horn, have you the horn, have you the ha ha horn? Over their voices dollared bassooned attack, booming over bombarding chords. When love absorbs my ardent soul, Roll of Ben Sol Benjamin rolled to the quivery love shivery roof panes. War, war! cried Father Cowley. You're the warrior. So I am, Ben Warrior laughed. I was thinking of your landlord. Love or money. He stopped. He wagged huge beard, huge face over his blunder huge. Sure, you'd burst the tympanum of her ear, man, Mr. Dedalus said through smoke aroma. "'with an organ like yours.' "'In bearded, abundant laughter, "'Dollard shook upon the keyboard. "'He would. "'Not to mention another membrane,' "'Father Cowley added. "'Half-time, Ben. "'Amoroso manantropo. "'Let me there.' "'Miss Kennedy served two gentlemen "'with tankards of cool stout. "'She passed a remark. "'It was, indeed, first gentleman said, "'beautiful weather.' They drank cool stout. Did she know where the Lord Lieutenant was going? And heard steel hoofs, ring hoof ring. No, she couldn't say, but it would be in the paper. Oh, she need not trouble, no trouble. She waved about her, outspread, independent, searching. The Lord Lieutenant, her pinnacles of hair slow moving, Lord Lieutenant. Too much trouble, first gentleman said. Oh, not in the least, way he looked that, Lord Lieutenant. Gold by bronze heard iron steel. My ardent soul, I care not for our the morrow. In liver gravy blew mashed, mashed potatoes. Love and war some one is. Ben Dollard's famous. Night he ran round to us to borrow a dress suit for that concert. Trousers tight as a drum on him. Musical porkers. Molly did laugh when he went out. Threw herself back across the bed, screaming, kicking, with all his belongings on show. Oh, saints above, I'm drenched. Oh, the women in the front row. Oh, I'd never laughed so many. Well, of course, that's what gives him the bass barrel tone. For instance, eunuchs. Wonder who's playing. Nice touch. Must be Cowley. Musical. Knows whatever note you play. Bad breath he has, poor chap. Stopped. Miss Deuce, engaging, Lydia Deuce, bowed to suave solicitor, George Lidwell, gentleman, entering. Good afternoon. She gave her moist, a lady's, hand to his firm clasp. Afternoon. Yes, she was back, to the old ding-dong again. Your friends are inside, Mr. Lidwell. George Lidwell, suave, solicited, held a Lydia hand. 
Bloom ate live as said before. Clean here, at least. That chap in the Burton, gummy with gristle. No one here, Goulding and I. Clean tables, flowers, mitres of napkins. Pat to and fro, bald pat. Nothing to do. Best value in dub. Piano again. Cowley it is, way he sits into it, like one together, mutual understanding. Tiresome shapers, scraping fiddles, eye on the bow-end, sawing the cello, remind you of toothache. Her high, long snore. Night we were in the box, trombone under blowing like a grampus between the acts, other brass chap unscrewing, emptying spittle. Conductor's legs, too, bags trousers, jiggity-jiggity. Do right to hide them. Jiggity jingle jaunty jaunty. Only the harp, lovely gold glowering light. Girl touched it, poop of a lovely. Gravy's rather good fit for a golden ship, Erin. The harp that once or twice. Cool hands, Ben Houth, the rhododendrons. We are their harps. I, he, old, young. Ah, I couldn't, man. Mr. Dedalus said, shy, listless, strongly. Go on, blast you, Ben Dollard growled. Get it out in bits. Mapari, Simon, Father Cowley said. Down stage he strode some paces, grave, tall in affliction, his long arms outheld. Hoarsely the apple of his throat horsed softly. Softly he sang to a dusty seascape there, a last farewell. A headland, a ship, a sail upon the billows. Farewell. A lovely girl, her veil a wave upon the wind upon the headland. What wind around her? Cowley sang, Ma pari tout amour, il mio sgardo le contre. She waved, unhearing Cowley, her veil to one departing, dear one, to wind, love, speeding sail, return. Go on, Simon. Ah, sure, my dancing days are done, Ben. Well. Mr. Dedalus laid his pipe to rest beside the tuning fork, and, sitting, touched the obedient keys. No, Simon, Father Cowley turned. Play it in the original, one flat. The keys, obedient, rose higher, told, faltered, confessed, confused. Upstage strode Father Cowley. "'Here, Simon, I'll accompany you,' he said. "'Get up.' "'By Graham Lemon's pineapple rock, "'by Elvery's elephant jingly jogged, "'steak kidney liver mashed at meat fit for princes "'sat princes bloom and goulding. "'Princes at meat they raised and drank. "'Power and cider.' "'Most beautiful tenor air ever written,' Richie said. "'Sonambula. "'He heard Joel Ma sing that one night. "'Ah, what McGuckin!' Yes, in his way. Choir-boy style. Moss was the boy. Moss mass boy. A lyrical tenor, if you like. Never forget it, never. Tenderly bloom over liverless bacon saw the tightened features strain. Backache he. Bright's bright eye. Next item on the program. Paying the piper. Pills, pounded bread, worth a guinea a box. Stave it off a while. Sings, too, down among the dead men. Appropriate. Kidney pie. Sweets to the. Not making much hand of it. Best value in. Characteristic of him. Power. Particular about his drink. Flaw in the glass. Fresh vartry water. Fecking matches from counters to save. Then squander a sovereign in dribs and drabs. And when he's not wanted a farthing. Screwed refusing to pay his fare. Curious types. End of chapter 11a, read by Kara Schallenberg, www.kray.org, on June 16, 2006, in Oceanside, California.